right so we carry on with our work and we are just we we we've got everything we need on this table which we call transactional fact, fact table um and we know for each quantity that was each product that was bought we've got quantities we also have the unit cost and the unit sales price so we need to calculate what the total cost would be what the total sales would be then we can know the profit and then we can move on from from there okay so uh you need our total cost would be we multiply quantity here by by the this one and um, I'm just going to commit that um, and we have that okay so we multiplied quantity by by the cost to get the total cost basically that's what this this is saying so the same would we would do for total sales we are uh, going to can i ask a question yes uh, please. i just found out that uh, you you just did uh for the first one and they uh, automatically um uh, it filled the rest of the um you know the answer what well, what well, well, what did you do is it because you put it in a table or yes it's okay. it's because it's in a table so it just automatically picked every every everyone um but if it didn't all you just need would all you would have needed to do would be to, to um, come to that first one and yeah. just double click when you have that plus sign yeah. just double click because dragging, you could have a really long table. Okay. You know, so double click like that, like click twice, then check that everything is populated. Um, because again, when you double click, if if there was a gap somewhere, double clicking would would fill up up to uh, where there is uh, a stop in the data. So if there was a gap somewhere that could be the end of it. That's why it's good to check and be sure that everything is actually actually populated. You know, but if your table is small, you can drag whichever one's convenient for you. Thank you. You are welcome. So let's um, multiply equals quantity again. Multiplied by the unit sales now. And I'm just going to commit that. And we have and we have that as well. So um, for consistency, because for the prices, we've been having two decimal places there. So, and we don't have any decimal place for, for this, I don't think. It's whole number all through. So just for consistency, it might be nice to, to, um, to put that in as, um okay so we have that um then we can mode uh, we can uh, find our profit now very easily so total profit or just profit it doesn't matter i think i'll just say profit so profit now would be um it equals we we just um, take away now minus this and i'm just going to comment that and we have our profit so we are getting somewhere uh, this is an auto save so we are fine if you're not um on auto save it's good to save your work so that you don't lose any work that you know you you would have done okay so now we have those, we have total sales, total profit, profit margin, and we want these to be displayed by, um, by, you know, this, we want the KPIs as well as that, you know, okay. What do you think we should do with the profit margin? What, sh what should we do with the profit margin? As a... Should we calculate it in here or do it in within the pivot table? What's your take? We can also calculate it here. Okay. 
Sorry, sir. I thought they said you're on your on your way. When did you arrive? You are you are you are not muted, your Sally Branch. Oh, are you talking to somebody in class? Okay. I thought you were on your phone or something. I'm talking to Mr. Ferdinand. I mean, Mr. Francis. Mr. Fr Mr. Fr Mr. Francis. <laughs> 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 It's a process. Oh, it is well. Uh, right. So profit margin now would be profit divided by sales price, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. You are correct. So we divide the atom by sales and then we just make it into a percentage, basically. Um, that's interesting. Uh, let's see if, I don't think that would help, but let's see if making it into a percentage would, would help. Oh, how is that? So I divided this by this. How is that one? You multiply by 100. You need to multiply by 100. Yeah, I, I know. I'm just yeah, looking you at multiply the by 100. You're still going to get 100. Exactly. Um, so oh, oh, something is wrong. Supposed to, so the, the answer is what I'm querying now. The answers yeah. we are getting for so is what profit. I'm querying because uh, can someone use a calculator if we do 116.64 divided by 1412? That cannot be right, it will be less than one, it should be. So, what what happened? I um, think you did profit over profit. Well, did I? Probably. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> like I see. Yeah, you see. I did. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So it was profit over this, not profit over over profit. That's not what we need. Okay. All right. That looks a lot better. Then we can we can decide to percent the 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 whole column really. So, and then we have that. Okay, so we have all of those in. Um, it's, it's always a good practice to look through. So, and... so just for learning purpose. Yeah. Can you explain why profit margin is that formula? Profit over um, total sales price. I, I mean, from the word margin, isn't it? Okay. Uh, our profits compared to uh, everything that we made. That's how right. much of everything that came in, how much of That's it right. is actually profit, you um, know? Um, yeah. Yeah. That's right. And since uh, business owners like to look at things from percentage point of view, you know, then looking at it as a percentage of the other. Um, so like, okay, we sold like 100 houses in Luton and we make we made like a, what a hundred million uh, pounds, um, but only ten percent is actually profit. So that way, um, a business mind can easily comprehend, you know, can easily comprehend it. That's that's how I I understand it. Yeah, I think you're very right. It's uh, it's more of a business language. You know, yeah. it's just very easy for an investor or anybody who you're trying to say, you know, um, if we go into this business, this is going to be, you know, percentage of your investment that you will, yeah. will be getting back. So it's just more, rather than say you make 150, 150 of which amount, but 8% of any amount, you know, you, mm -hmm. you put there, it's more, much more um, uh, easier to understand as a business yeah. banker. Yeah. yeah yeah, this first row now, product 24 was sold. Uh, nine of it was sold. So total money that came in for this product was a thousand four for something. But the profit there is not up to 10%. Um, so 8% of that amount is actually the, the actual profit. Right. So we we've I think we've gotten everything, so to say. Um, that we need because everything 
yeah, the major KPIs that need to be used on here are just the total sales. Total so profits. Sorry, I want to take you a step, a step backward. Yeah. Can you go back fine. to that? Yeah. Something click in my brain. Okay. Now, the first the first product, mm -hmm. you have 8%. And you are yeah. talking about, the, is it on unit or on that number of quantity? On that number of quantity. So now the question is, if you are saying this will form business decision making, hmm. is it not possible that the quantity might influence what the margin will be? Or if you have calculated on unit, now let's look at, okay, if I sell one and I made so so amount, what will my profit be on each one? Yeah. Which is maybe unit margin could be more compared. I might be wrong, correct me. Anyway. No, no, no. No, I like I like could your be more than looking at it from this, just this. We might be giving business wrong advice mm -hmm. based on this, comparing it to number of quantities. But if you if you can limit to okay, per one that we mm -hmm. say, this mm -hmm. is the profit and this is the margin. Mm -hmm. That could give business better picture. And so, okay, or do you, if you push more of this product, we tend to make more because on each unit we make more. Does that okay. make sense? It does. It makes sense. Um, but this is looking at what has already happened and okay. how okay. we are going okay. to use what has already happened to make decision. Okay. okay. Um, okay. So all we have sold is actually nine, nine quantities for this particular product. That's okay. True. So we can then deduce that, okay, it's 8% that our profit is. On the other hand, if we were calculating profit margin based on each quantity, um, that would not give us a true um, sense of the actual happening within the business because not every quantity, possibly not every quantity has been sold. That's true. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Then also to answer Mr to take what Mr. France, is it? Yeah, Mr. Francis said better. You know, we can, those ones with low profit margin, we could find out why they are low. And those ones with high profit margin, we could fi find out, we could just try and push more of it into the market. That's true. Yeah. The That's ones true. with the higher percentages. Yeah. If you look at that uh, end column, you could see that we have 26%. Mm. You have... So those ones with a high profit margin, we could push more of them out. Yeah. And those ones with a low profit margin, we could investigate why their margin is low. Yeah. Is it because of our own faults? Mm. Or is it because uh, the market don't, doesn't like that project pr product or something? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And and also, you know, most of the time when money comes in, the total sales money comes in, the the the, the mind of an average person is to look at, oh, we, we made this much amount, you know. Um, but look at this particular row two now, uh, product 24. Total sales was quite a good amount, a thousand four something. But profit margin on it was below 10%. But look at mm. this, um, this row six now. You know, the total money that came on it was actually just 80. Um, I hope that's right. But yeah, it's it's 80. Where's the quantity uh, of it? Um, um, just to be sure. So I want to look for the quantity and then be sure that that should actually be 80. Okay, so we've got 12 in quantity that was sold. Okay, unit cost, unit price is that much. So the total money that came in was actually just 60, you know, but it's telling us that um, the profit margin is actually 25%. Okay, so my uh, my suggestion then would be that this costs little to stock up, you know, it costs little compared to the, the row one. Now. It, it also costs little to sell, you know. So should we be buying and selling more of that 
you know, it looks like that is giving us more profit, you know, compared to how much we spent stocking this, um, this one. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Those that cost little and you can sell them for little, tendency is you will sell more quantities of them yeah, and make more gain. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. yeah. I think the, the business decision there, um, there, 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 there are so many ways that um, uh, a business can look at it. Yeah. Uh, the business will want to will have a certain amount of capital and they want to and they want to spread their money. You understand? Mm. And then you can look at it that okay, we, this product is a bit uh, uh, it's less. We can we can buy this number of product yeah. and then we can sell this number you know of product. However, in that kind of business, you know that uh, for you to be making good profit, you have to rely on a high volume because yeah. because because the, the you know the, the the profit margin and the and and the, and 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 the, and the amount is small somebody yeah. look at it that you know what we'll rather invest our, uh, put our money on on a product that is high but that, that give us high return even if you're then you might you don't need to sell volume even if you sell two or three of that product you're good um a good example is you can buy a car for example for that, that costs one thousand pounds and you can only sell it for 500 pounds but you go and buy a car that costs you ten thousand pounds but you can sell it for fifteen thousand because of the brand of that car, because of what that car worth. So that car, you can you can just in your business decision will be to sell just two. If you can sell just two of that car, you're good. But if your big, if your decision is that you don't have enough cash flow, understand? So the, the little cash flow you have, you want it to go uh, further. Then you can think that uh, okay, maybe it might be good at, uh, idea for me to invest on. I mean to to, to focus on small smaller cost but mm -hmm. i know that uh, i will need to rely on a large volume for me yeah. to make good return on my investment yeah so that's the beauty of you know thank you very much uh, sir for that explanation that's the beauty of um looking at the profit margin isn't it Ten thousand um worth of car going for fifteen thousand. that pro profit margin is quite high so if if I'm to you know put that information into Excel and work it out, I would know that okay I'm actually gonna focus my energy more, you know, on this that is bringing more money. It also would depend on timing, you know, uh, how long did it take me for me to be able to sell that car? Within that period, was I able to sell like these the the lower cost cars like more quantities of it? And you know quite a lot of things, um, decisions going on, uh, which with time historical data would point you, you know, as a business in the direction of what to do, um, and these these decisions they change over time as well. It's not really constant. Okay, so we we've gotten every everything almost, but we need to now put a proper analysis a proper dashboard into into um into what bring it into existence i'm looking for the best word to use it didn't come anyway so we come into insert while we are still in the table how you know you are in the table is you you see this table design you know so we come into insert and we 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 click on pivot table which we will use for analysis Pivot table is quite a very powerful tool, and it's picked it's picked the table range uh, because there's a name for this table. It's just put it as input data. If there wasn't a particular name, it would just pick it would just pick um, maybe the the cell numbers from A one to um, Z hundred, however many cells are within your table, and then the next argument is or. Uh, where do you want it? New table or this this ex existing one? We want it to be in a new worksheet. Um, uh, location, where do you want it? Um, you don't have to specify this bit to be honest, but if you have a particular uh, worksheet that you have already created, you would need to go into it using the arrow to pick to pick that that table. But in the, in this case, we cannot actually just create a new worksheet for us, that's fine. 
um, and it's asking, do you want to add this to the data model? Had it been, we have a data model here already. Yes, you you may want to click that. I normally click this if I believe I will be needing to use the distinct count in my pivot table. Uh, clicking this helps to, to do distinct count. Uh, but I don't think that's very relevant right now. So I won't click it. And we can just OK that. And here we go. It's gone on to create a sheet one, which we can rename as the pivot table. OK, and then, then we can go into our business business requirement. I'm just going to move this pivot table maybe to the last, last um, one here. And yeah, so uh, we can you know, move between um, the business requirement and the and the and the pivot table. So we need the total sales, the total profit, and the total and the profit margin. I'm quite curious on how that profit margin is going to pan out. But the first thing I normally do is to come here and sort this A to Z so that I can easily pick. Um, I don't have to be looking for tables when they are when they are scattered. So um, I need total sales, total profit. So I'm going to uh, I'll click as um, cost sales. Did it say cost though, or am I just being doing over Sabina? Uh, profit my I don't think it's asked for cost. No, it didn't. So. I'm going to remove that cost because it did not ask for it. So total sales um, and profits, profit itself. So we can click on the profit. Um, and I'm going to, I want the profit margin to be the last. So I'm going to drop this like that so just to just to rearrange. Okay. Uh, most of the time the decimals, uh, they don't really count. Let me see if I can do this all together. Um, for for huge stakeholders, it's all right to it's all right to uh, just leave these as whole numbers. You know, um, they don't necessarily always um, care for the decimal part of. That's what I have observed anyway. They just want to see whole numbers. Okay, um, and um, okay. So I'm just formatting, that's all, which we can do here. We can put some decimals, you know. So um, so we made 401,000 plus, 68,000 of that is a profit. Would it be right to say, Profit margin here is 88.95%. We're, we're, we're remo removing the decimal point. We still have decimal point on the... On those two, okay. So let's remove them from here, actually, as well. So let's check, is this... If we uh, do this calculation from here, so 68,908 divided by 401, would that number still be right? No. Okay, so we were not really very right to have done the profit margin from the table is my is what I believe. What I think, I think the profit margin should have just been calculated on here. Um okay. yeah, because um I I and I did think that that would happen when we did it from here. You see, it's gone on to sum all of this, isn't it? To do a sum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but we need it to actually do it from here. So what's our sum? What's our profit, rather? What's our total? Um, do, uh, the, because we we need it for the whole, you know. Had it been it was uh, in Power BI, this is where you use count rules to, to do a proper profit margin. You know, uh, uh, not control some x or the x the iterations the x functions now would have worked well. 
but we don't have that X function within, within the capacity of what we are doing right now. So I would say let's remove that um, profit margin from that table and let's actually do it from here. That would be my suggestion. What did we get if anybody was using a calculator to actually check these out? About 17.2% there about. Hmm. Again, is that really right? So we must always query what we are doing. It, it could be that we need to go back into the table and see, because that profit actually seems low to me, you know, but that's just my instincts. But anytime I pick something like that, I just want to go back and check everything very, um, very detailed within the table. You mean the profit of 68,000 is low? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it looks like it's to me like it's low. I may be Let me check the column, the profit column in the... Yeah. It will highlight the whole profit column to tell us. Let's see. In the table, yeah. So if you highlight that, so what's that giving us 68,900? Yeah, so it's right then, Abby. Yeah. And then we picked everything, right? Okay. I think uh, that 70% is, is correct. If you're looking at for some, uh, what's the percentage of, uh, we have to, we have a sum of a total profit of 68,000 and, mm. and then we have total, sales of 400 uh, and something thousand so yeah. i think that's 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 a uh, it looks look more like a proper profit margin doesn't it correct because uh, yes yeah yes. that's correct because if you look yeah. at even if you divide your 400 into into four places well, what are you gonna have you know is it yeah yeah so i'm going to delete this profit margin out of the way because it's it's not um it's not adding any any value. It's if it's not getting what we needed to get, then there's no nothing that it's doing here. Why is it table? What's that? Table no, I want to delete. Okay, thank you for the reminder. Uh-huh. Okay. So I've taken that out. Um, and I'm just going to refresh here. So that we we get the profit margin out of the way. Uh, where's my refresh? Okay, so that's that's been removed as well. Okay, so um, we're going to need to do a kind of a calculated thing within pivot table, which we won't do now. It's it's past our time, and that will be an assignment for us. Actually, how do you calculate within your pivot table? I believe Mr. Azim has shown us something like this before. So this might be the time to, to go revise. Okay, I want to calculate, I want to have this divided by this and then multiply it by 100 to get my profit margin. How do I, how do I achieve that within here? That will be assi the assignment we are going home with. Please don't forget because that's where we are starting from for tomorrow. Apart from those that are showing us their those that are showing us they are done um, 